Hello, and thank you for viewing our Better Breathers Network recording on managing acti activities of daily living and living with lung disease. My name is Nicole Goldsborough, and I'm the National Manager of Lung Disease Programs for the American Lung Association, and I'm excited to be joined today with Jen Schroeder, an occupational therapist for, from Minnesota. And she will walk us through our top, her, her top tips for managing your daily activities of living as well as address some concerns that she sees from the patients that she works with living with a chronic lung disease. And next slide. But before I turn it over to Jen, I just wanted to share some more information about the American Lung Association. For more than 115 years, the American Lung Association has been a champion for um, lung health with a mission to save lives by improving lung health and preventing lung disease. We work to achieve our mission every day through education, research, and advocacy. Our mission includes defeating lung cancer, championing for clean air for everyone, improving the quality of life for those living with chronic lung disease and their families, and creating a world free of tobacco. Next slide. As a reminder, always consult your healthcare provider or personal physician with any questions you have regarding your specific medical condition or information from today's recording. Next slide. And now I'm so pleased to introduce our featured speaker today, Jen Schroeder has been a occupational therapist for almost 30 years, working in acute care, transitional care, and outpatient rehabilitation with a focus on helping patients return to their greatest level of independence. She has a vast experience working with patients with acute and chronic health conditions, including patients managing the impact of living with a pulmonary disease such as COPD, and how it affects their daily lives. She says her goal is to provide patients with the tools they need to help live their most fulfilling and independent lives. Welcome, Jen, and thank you for sh sharing your expertise with us today. Hi, Nicole. Thank you for that introduction, and thank you all for joining me to talk about this important topic. Like Nicole said, I will be talking about the impact chronic health conditions such as COPD and other lung diseases can have on your ability to complete your daily activities. Certain activities that make up your daily routine can worsen your COPD symptoms. So we will be talking about why this happens and what you can do to improve your daily routine, allowing you to get your activities done safely and as independently as possible. The daily activities we will be talking about fall into two categories, ADLs and IADLs. So when we're talking about ADLs, we're referring to activities of daily living, sometimes called BADLs or basic activities of daily living. And these refer to our everyday activities, such as dressing, moving about, whether you're walking or using a wheelchair, eating, and even our cognition, because the ability to focus and stay safe does take energy. The other daily activities we're looking at are known as instrumental activities of daily living, or IADLs. And these are what we consider higher level activities that generally require more energy. So activities like shopping, meal preparation, properly managing your medication, being a caregiver, and using transportation, whether you're driving yourself or someone is driving you. These all take a fair amount of energy and can be quite fatiguing. As many of you probably know, lung diseases such as COPD can make your ADLs and IADLs challenging to do because you become short of breath, fatigued or run out of energy, making it difficult to get done the things that you want to or have to do. The overall impact of this can be a decline in your quality of life and the need for seeking assistance from others. This also can result in the inability to stay active, 
whether this means being able to bowl, play around a golf, or going for a walk in your neighborhood. Staying active is an important aspect of managing your lung disease and being able to complete your ADLs and IADLs. It may seem counterintuitive to keep active, but physical activity helps with your circulation, strength, and improving your overall endurance. You may wonder what makes you fatigue quicker since being diagnosed with a lung disease. It usually is not just one thing in particular. It can be a combination of reasons, including, including the fact that your body may be working harder to breathe, you have overall decreased endurance, you may not be sleeping as well, and you may have other health issues that contribute to becoming fatigued. Before we talk about things that you can do to have a positive impact on your ADLs, and IADLs. I want you to take a moment to think about how you're doing in your daily life right now. What activities worsen your symptoms? How difficult is it for you to complete your daily activities? Are there certain activities you cannot do anymore, avoid, or need help to complete? And have you talked to your healthcare provider, a team member from a pulmonary rehab program, or an occupational therapist about the challenges you face. Sometimes you may not even realize how much energy a certain activity takes. For example, going for a doctor appointment can involve walking out to the car, loading and unloading an assistive device that you use for mobility, such as a walker, getting yourself in and out of the car, getting into and out of the doctor's office, and repeating the whole process to get home. Oftentimes, my clients report this as a very tiring event. Another thing to consider is that the challenges that come with having a lung disease can be stressful and anxiety provoking. And this can lead to a cyclical pattern where you feel stress related to the difficulties of getting your daily activities completed. And this increases your shortness of breath which then leads to anxiety, which in turn increases your shortness of breath. Another trigger for anxiety and then shortness of breath is when you're going to do an activity that you know previously caused you shortness of breath. So even before you start this activity, it comes with the idea for you that it's going to be ta taxing and difficult and perhaps make you feel uncomfortable. Hopefully the tips that you learned today can help to break this cycle. So let's get going on talking about techniques that you can start using today as you go about your daily routine and some ideas that you may want to start in the near future. One of the first things I teach my clients is the five P's. The five P's are a great way to approach any activity that you do. And as you can see here, the five P's stand for planning, prioritizing, positioning, and per slip breathing, as well as pacing. The goal of planning is to eliminate extra steps in order to conserve energy. Planning includes gathering all the items you need for a task and keeping frequently used items within easy reach. Planning also means thinking through your day and week and planning to alternate heavy and light activities so that you don't do too many heavy activities at a time which can trigger your symptoms. For example, I often tell my clients that on the day that they are going out for an appointment, they shouldn't also try to vacuum, clean the floors, or clean the bathroom. The combination of all these activities in one day can really trigger your symptoms, making you feel worse by the end of that day and sometimes into the next day or two days as well. Prioritizing means doing the things you want to or need to get done when you have the most energy, and oftentimes this goes hand in hand with planning. So if you have the most energy in the morning, then this is a good time to schedule some of those tasks that you take that take more effort, such as running an errand, going for an appointment, or doing one of your heavier household tasks. Pacing is another important technique to use. And just like you would expect, this means trying not to rush and not doing too much at one time. 
So set realistic goals for yourself on how much you are going to get completed in a day or week. And most importantly, do not wait until you're tired or exhausted to take a break. So many of my clients, when I first see them, tell me about all the tasks that they have done on a certain day, and then they report they felt all done in and couldn't do anything for the next several days or that their symptoms were quite a bit worse. This is what you really want to avoid and pacing can help with this. Start implementing pacing by taking short rests before you become fatigued. And I cannot stress this enough. Make sure it's before you feel tired because it takes your body longer to recover if you wait until that all done in point. You may not get as much done in one day, but by spacing activities out over the week, you can get the things done that you need to not trigger your symptoms, and hopefully have enough energy left to do some of the activities that you enjoy doing. The fourth P is positioning. And for this one, we're talking about not putting yourself in a taxing or uncomfortable position for too long of a time. As we get into talking about specific ADLs and IADLs, I will give you scenarios that this applies to. But in general, you don't wanna be bending over excessively standing in one position for too long, or have your arms over your head for a prolonged time because all of these positions make your body work harder and can be fatiguing. The final P is pursed slip breathing. Using pursed slip breathing during your ADLs and IADLs can be very helpful. In the next slide, we will watch a short video on using pursed slip breathing techniques during your daily routine. Okay, and we're having a little bit of problem here with that, so I'll just speak to it real quickly. Um, I can't get the video running, sorry about that. Um, so what you wanna do is be sure to look on the American Lung Association website and um, so that you can watch this very helpful video on pursed lip breathing. I'll speak to it a little bit here. Um, pursed lip breathing can be very helpful to use throughout your day, um, bolstering your ADLs and IADLs. And also, if you start experience, experiencing shortness of breath during any activities that you're doing. Um, and you can watch the video on the American Lung Association to get a better idea of how to implement that. Sorry about that. The next several slides will take a closer look at applying the five P's to your daily routine and what that might look like for you. Mornings can be particularly hard for, for people with lung disease due to increased mucus and shortness of breath. This is a good time to pace yourself and incorporate several rest breaks into your morning routine. Try to plan ahead by doing things like laying out your clothing the night before or shaving the night before, if that's part of your daily routine. You also may wanna talk to your healthcare provider to see if he or she feels any medication changes would help you with feeling better in the morning. Dressing can be an exhausting for some folks, and I have had many clients tell me that they are ready for a nap by the time they finish dressing in the morning. There are several techniques that you can use to make this task less fatiguing. Positioning is a big help with dressing, with you sitting to do as much as possible and using adaptive equipment like a long-handled shoehorn or reacher to decrease the need for prolonged bending. Looser fitting clothes and elastic waistbands are also very helpful so that you are not using energy to tug and pull, pull clothing items on. Bathing and showering is another area that positioning helps. By using a shower chair and handheld shower head, you can sit for the majority of your shower in order to expend less energy. Plan ahead by keeping the humidity down and decreasing the water temperature. Temperature extremes and high humidity are harder on your breathing. And I recommend avoiding highly scented bath products as strong scents can trigger lung symptoms as well. Grooming and hygiene sees us using some of the same principles we have already discussed, including use of positioning 
by sitting to complete tasks and planning by having all of your grooming supplies gathered in one place. I also recommend having a hairstyle that is easy to maintain so that you do not have your arms overhead for extended periods of time trying to fix your hair. Also consider using electric supplies for greater ease, such as an electric razor or toothbrush. However, we will be talking about when not to use these items in the next slide. If you remember from earlier in the talk, medication management is part of those higher level IADL tasks and oxygen is considered one of your medications. This slide provides some safety reminders about using your oxygen during ADL and IADL tasks. And it includes the warning of not using electrical items on or directly near your body if you're using oxygen, since a spark from these items could ignite the oxygen. You also want to be careful of any household and personal care items that may be flammable, have petroleum jelly or alcohol in them, as none of these should be used near your ox oxygen. This, of course, includes smoking, open flames, and lighting candles or fireplaces. You also want to make sure your portable oxygen tank has enough oxygen in it to support you going out for errands or other activities so you don't run out of oxygen when you're away from home. I have my clients try this at home first. So prior to leaving your home with your portable tank, be sure to fill a portable tank and track and keep track of how much time you have before it's low. This way, when you run errands, you will know how many hours you have. And remember, if your rate of supplemental oxygen ever changes, say from two to three, you want to recheck how much time this gives you as it will change. Another aspect of medication management is keeping track of all of your medications and when to take them. By setting up medications using pill boxes or blister packs that organize your medications and having a system in place for medication reminders if you need them, you will save energy you would otherwise expend on doing this on a daily basis. If you use a nebulizer, you want to be sure to store it in a convenient location and have a comfortable place to sit when you're using it. The American Lung Association has a very helpful educational video on how to use and clean your nebulizer that I highly recommend you watching if you use a ne nebulizer as part of your regular treatment regime. As we move into talking about your IADLs or instrumental activities of daily living, we will keep thinking about how to do these tasks while putting the five P's into action. I find that IADLs sometimes give you more opportunities to use your five Ps because you can plan ahead for what you need to or want to get done in a day or week and prioritize tasks that are most necessary or important to you. This gives you the chance, hopefully, to spread out tasks and do the heavier activities when you have more energy. You also wanna to remember to avoid cleaning products that contain harmful chemicals that can impact your breathing. When it comes to positioning when you're doing household tasks, try to avoid excessive or repetitive bending. Consider using a reacher to pick items up, sitting to do tasks such as folding clothes, sliding items along counters rather than carrying them, using a wheeled cart to move items, and doing smaller loads of laundry. I also recommend using a laundry bag or cloth grocery bag with handles to carry small loads of laundry over your shoulder rather than using a basket. This keeps the load close to your body so you're exerting yourself less and keeps your hands free for better balance and safety. Meal preparation can also be tiring. Try preparing simple meals that make a lot so that you can freeze leftovers. Slow cookers can be helpful to cut down on the work that you have to do. When it comes to positioning, consider sitting as much as you can for some of the prep work, like cutting up veggies, and keep frequently used items within easy reach so you're not bending or reaching repeatedly to get pots, pans, and utensils. Pacing is also helpful when it comes to meals. I often recommend to my clients to eat five to six smaller meals throughout the day because digesting larger meals is harder to do. And also this keeps your energy up throughout the day. 
try to rest before cleaning up after meals so that you incorporate the rest breaks that we talked about earlier. Throughout this talk, I've mentioned the use of various pieces of durable medical equipment, such as shower chairs and grab bars, and adaptive equipment like reachers and long-handled shoehorns. Oftentimes, I assist clients in ordering the equipment they need, so I just want to highlight a few things about obtaining this type of equipment. I have listed some of the frequently some of the items frequently covered by insurance, such as walkers, wheelchairs, and canes. For this type of equipment, you want to be sure to get a prescription from your primary health care provider and check with your insurance to see if there is any other supporting paperwork that they need. Generally, you need to go through a medical supply store that will work with your insurance for this equipment. Less frequently covered items include the adaptive equipment used for dressing, as well as shower chairs and grab bars. Commodes are a more borderline item, depending on if they are deemed medically necessary, in which case you would want to see what your insurance needs along with the doctor's prescription in order to get reimbursement. If you're getting equipment that is not covered, some of the options I recommend for my clients include checking the local drugstore, home improvement stores, online such as Amazon, check out local charities and organizations, and VFWs are also a good option as many of them have loaner equipment programs. An important aspect of managing your lung disease successfully is getting support. This can include talking to your healthcare provider to discuss any challenges you are having and getting referrals for a pulmonary rehab program or a consultation with an occupational therapist. Contacting your area agency on agent, aging is also a good place to start since these organizations provide information on numerous services and supports specific to your area. Links to this agency generally can be found on your state government website. Family and friends are good resources to get help, especially with specific tasks. Oftentimes, family and friends are very happy to help with something that is more tiring tasks such as changing bed sheets or delivering groceries once a week. And two other resources to check out are the Lung Helpline and the Living with COPD online support community. And both of these resources can be found on the American Lung Association website as well. Some assistance does require out-of-pocket expense, and that would be something like assistance from a home health agency or a house cleaning service. However, depending on your situation, services provided by personal care attendants sometimes can be covered if you meet certain guidelines. I know we covered a lot of information during this presentation, but I hope that you take away at least the following tips that we talked about today. First, make sure that you use your five P's during your ADL and IADL tasks, plan, pace, position, prioritize, and per slip breathing. Second, stay active. This helps improve your circulation, helps the body better use oxygen, and can help build your energy level. Third, ask for and accept help. I know this can be difficult to do, but even if you pick three to four tasks that really are tough for you to do and ask for help or hire someone if you're able to, for example, to assist with outdoor maintenance tasks or heavier cleaning activities, it really can save energy, decrease lung disease symptoms, and reduce your risk for injury. And finally, remember to use your prescribed medication, which includes your oxygen and nebulizer as directed by your healthcare provider. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this information will be helpful to you for managing your lung disease while living life to the fullest. Next, Nicole will talk about American Lung Association resources. Thank you, Thank Jen. You, Jen. I really appreciate you sharing um, so much great information about ways that um, people can kind of help manage their um, chronic lung disease as well as their daily activities of living. And I loved the five Ps 
um, which were planning, pacing, prioritizing, per slip breathing and positioning. I really appreciate that. I like that. Um, so thank you for sharing those helpful tips. A little bit about the American Lung Association resources as Jen referred to some of them um, throughout the presentation. If you have not already, took, take a look at our website on lung.org. Um, all of the videos and one pagers that were referenced, such as the deep breathing, um, oxygen management, as well as um, how to clean your nebulizer, they all can be found on lung.org. Jen also mentioned our living with lung disease or living with COPD um, online support communities. We have over 11 online support communities and you can find them all at lung.org backslash community. We also have a free nationwide resource called the Lung Helpline, and it is staffed by respiratory therapists and registered nurses, as well as tobacco cessation counselors um, who are available to really answer any of your lung health questions. So if you have questions about um, connecting with a durable medical equipment company or questions about something you heard in today's presentation, while we do encourage you to contact your doctor um, for specific medical related questions, um, know that there is support through the American Lung Association, um, our lung helpline. We also have a YouTube channel and on the YouTube channel is our latest and greatest videos, which do actually include all of the nebulizer, oxygen, as well as deep breathing videos. Um, but we also have a lot of other great resources on our YouTube channel. And last but not least, um, the Better Breathers Network. So the Better Breathers Network, or BBN for short, is a online patient program that really connects individuals living with lung disease, as well as their caregivers and families with resources available through the American Lung Association. Um, which is what today's program was um, for. So if you have not joined the Better Breathers Network or interested in learning more, I invite you to check out our, our page on lung.org backslash BBN. And next slide. And that concludes today's program. I just wanted to say thank you for watching this Better Breathers Network webcast. Take care.